Welcome to today's ICENTV Connect webinar. My name is Marianne Comparet and I'm speaking from the International Society for Neglected Tropical Diseases. Uh, it's absolutely our pleasure and really brilliant to see um, lots of you tuning in today for our um, Connect series. If you're new to, to the format and new to the webinars, uh, a particularly very warm welcome. And uh, we've been meeting a couple times a week since the beginning of the lockdown to discuss <clears throat> a wide range of topics and issues in and around tropical diseases. And one thing that's been uh, really apparent over the last few weeks is how international, multidisciplinary uh, are this uh, group and this audience has been, and also the huge amount of experience, expertise, uh, and ideas that everyone's been bringing to the table. And that's exactly what we are going to be discussing today. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, today's speakers. So it's our great pleasure to welcome today Amy Clark, speaking from Sightsavers. Hi, Amy. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Maryam. Hi. And uh, Gemma Brady is joining us from Accenture Development Partnerships. Hi, Gemma. Hi, everyone. And Dave Robson as well with Accenture Development Partnerships. And today, uh, we're going to hear um, more about an extremely exciting and recently launched funding opportunity. This is the DFID funded ASCEND program focusing on West and Central Africa. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to today's speakers and to all our attendees, please remember we've got a chat function going on on the right hand side. Um, feel free to say hello and also to post all your questions there. And uh, we'll meet again in a few moments uh, for a Q&A uh, with our, our speakers. So over to you, Amy and Gemma, and thank you so much for joining us today. Great. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, it's great to have this opportunity to be part of the ISNTD Connect lecture series. And it's such a great initiative to keep us all connected during this time when we're all working remotely. Um, so thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. So as Maria mentioned, my name's Amy Clark. I work for Site Savers as one of the team leads on the Ascend West and Central Africa program. So both Gemma and I will be running through a, a few slides here today um, where we'll um, talk through this fund and then there'll be the opportunity at the end to ask questions. But please feel free to, to drop any questions um, into the, the chat function as we go through. So the first slide here, just to run through the agenda briefly. So we're going to just talk through um, the Ascend West and, and Central Africa program, so you get an understanding of the, of the scope of work. And then we're going to talk through the focus of this webinar is the Ascend Learning and Innovation Fund, which is part of the wider Ascend West and Central Africa program. Um, and then I uh, will hand over to Gemma, who will talk us through the selection process, next steps, and then we'll be capturing some of your thoughts by doing some online polling through Mentimeter. And then there'll be the opportunity for, for questions at the end. So next slide, please, Dave. So what is the Ascend programme? So the Ascend West and Central Africa programme is funded by the Department for International Development. So it is the UK's kind of flagship integrated NTD programme. Um, and it is being managed by a consortia of partners. So it's being managed by Site Savers, the Schistosomiasis Control Initiative Foundation, the Liverpool School of, of Tropical Medicine and Mott MacDonald amongst other partners. And the programme is, is working to, to make significant progress towards the elimination of NTDs. So it will be aiming to deliver over 400 million treatments across 13 countries in Western Central Africa across three years. So it started in April 2019 and it's running until March 2022. Um, and in terms of, of the countries that it, it's covering, you can see on, on the, the map there, the countries that are, that are shaded. So there's 13 in total, um, and they include Benin, Burkina Faso, CAR, Chad, Cote d'Ivoire, Democratic Republic of Congo, 
Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Niger, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone. So the program is, is running to protect people for up to five NTDs, which are amenable to preventive chemotherapy. So the diseases that are, are noted on the slide there, so LF, onco, schistosomiasis, STH, and trachoma. So moving on to the next slide, We've just got a bit more detail here to explain the kind of scope of, of work that's covered by the Ascend West programme. So as I've mentioned, the programme is, is really focusing on kind of prevention and treatment, which includes mass drug administration, as well as provision for um, surgeries, including trachiasis surgery, uh, hydrocyl surgery, as well as lymphedema management. Um, and it has a, a big focus on integration and health system strengthening. So our, our consortia is, is really working towards strengthening the, the relevant building blocks of the health system. And all of, all of the partners um, in the consortia are working side by side with the ministries of health in endemic countries to support training um, and capacity building. And the fact that Another focus of the programme is, is really on kind of generating good quality data, as this is the, the bedrock, bedrock of any um, NTD programme. So the programme is, is generating a lot of evidence by supporting an extensive number of, of disease specific assessments, mapping um, and surveillance work, as a number of the countries are now reaching the point where, where MDA can, can stop. Um, and then finally, a big focus on cross-sectoral coordination, which is where this, this fund comes in, um, and a particular focus on health, uh, water, sanitation, and hygiene. So next slide, please, Dave. So hopefully that gives you a, a kind of flavor of the Ascend Western Central Africa program. So now I will just talk a little bit about the fund itself. So the fund is an integral part of the programme and it forms part of our kind of contract deliverables to DFID. So as a consortia, we took the decision to run this as an open innovation fund, um, as we saw this was really an opportunity to enhance the impact of the programme and really to bring in, bring in learning from both within the NTD sector as well as um, from outside. Um, so the fund has, has really been set up to be agile and responsive to the emerging needs from the Ascend program in Western Central Africa. Um, and it's been set up to, to support actionable interventions uh, that are based on critical emerging gaps um, that may, may appear or, or kind of known existing gaps. So we've purposefully designed the fund to be very flexible. So it will be funding a range of projects and a range of project types. Um, and this can include research focused projects, or it could include direct implementation in a country to test a new approach, um, or projects that, that may take proven ideas that have been proven elsewhere, potentially in other sectors not necessarily related to NTDs, and then applying it in an NTD context. So next slide, please, Dave. So the impact of COVID-19, so we're all living in very challenging circumstances at the moment, and the fund launch kind of coincided with um, this outbreak of, of COVID. Um, and in response, we, we have adapted um, the fund in consultation with DFID. So I'm sure you're all very much aware that, that as of the 1st of April, WHO advised that NTD activities that involve mass gathering gatherings be postponed. Um, and it is, it's really an un uncertain time for a, a lot of NTD programmes while activities are paused. Um, and as part of the fund team, we are monitoring the situation very closely. Um, 
and have also kind of responded to this to this challenge proactively um, by having a specific focus on COVID-19 as part of the fund. So we have created a, a specific COVID-19 challenge statement um, and in consultation with, with, with DFID, we want to kind of prioritise proposals that address COVID-19 in the first cycle of the fund. Um, and these proposals, we're encouraging um, applicants to explore how can NTD platforms be repurposed to support the COVID-19 response. And this could be exploring how um, the vast network of community volunteers that NTD programs use can support with COVID or looking at repurposing kind of behavior change communication messaging, um, as well as those surveillance and reporting platforms. And then finally, we're, we're also actively seeking proposals which are quite forward thinking as well. So thinking about how um, we can support the active recovery of NTD programs once WHO have advised that it's that it's safe to do so. So next slide, please. So to sum up in terms of our mission and how we will achieve it for the fund. So the mission really is to support the accelerate to accelerate the control and elimination of NTDs in West and Central Africa. Um, and to achieve this, we want to explore innovations and these can really be quite flexible. So we haven't defined innovation in a way that's tied to something that has to be completely brand new or focused on technology. It can be quite broad. So it can range from the brand new to also creative ways of applying, adapting or scaling approaches. So it could be, for example, you could apply a particular approach that's proven to work well in the context of malaria and then apply it to the NTD context. So the fund is, is really focused on supporting um, program adaptions by responding to the kind of external environment and learning and focusing on contributing to that global evidence base that can drive up the, the quality of NTD program. And we're also looking very much at opportunities to support um, the transition of operational findings into scalable programming and looking at opportunities where some research may have been conducted and then some additional support may be needed to help translate that research into programming and support with that research uptake. And finally, any funded project through this fund really needs to kind of complement and add value to the Ascend West and Central Africa program um, and focusing on those 13 countries that I mentioned earlier. So next slide, please. So in terms of what the fund will support, we've developed a range of, of challenge statements and we've developed these through um, a consultation process. So we consulted with DFID as well as other um, innovation funds in the NTD space, um, NTD technical experts, um, as well as other stakeholders from <clears throat> health and education um, to really kind of map out what, what are the kind of critical areas that we need to focus on um, to advance that elimination agenda in NTDs. And this is what we, we've kind of come up with. So through the fund, we're offering grants that range in size from £20,000 to £500,000. And then projects will need to address one of the five kind of following challenge statements. Um, and these range from supporting on the COVID-19 response and exploring kind of entry points for COVID-19 and seeing how NTD platforms can be repurposed to, to support that response in country. We're then also looking for applications um, that focus on enhancing collaboration and multi-sectoral action, um, and then universal health coverage, health systems strengthening, 
and data systems. So the, the fund has now launched and we are um, accepting concept notes, which are due at the end of this month on the 29th of May. Um, and at DFID's request, we are going to be prioritizing proposals that address the, the COVID-19 challenge statement. Um, so we would encourage you to read the fund guidelines, um, which Gemma will, will signpost shortly. But under e each of these challenge statements in the fund guidelines, we have a few kind of iterative examples of the, the kind of projects that we'd be looking to support under each of these topics. So next slide. So now I'm going to hand over to Gemma from Accenture Development Partnerships, who's going to talk through the fund selection process. Great. Thank you, Amy. So hopefully through um, that short history of, of the fund and what we're trying to achieve that Amy's just outlined, um, hopefully you're all very excited about the fund and, and uh, thinking about the applications that you can put in. So that's where I come in. I'm going to tell you exactly how uh, you can go about finding out more and also um, the application process as it's been designed to date. So the way we've designed this, as Amy said, has been in consultation with a number of people, including DFID, other innovation funds, um, both from the NTD space and from other kind of global health and wider to make sure that we're developing a process that is going to be fit for purpose, that's going to address some of those challenge statements and be transparent as to what gets prioritised when and how. So it's a two stage process that's been designed, initially starting with the concept application. So that's where we'd be looking for a summary of the, uh, the proposed idea and really looking at that problem that it's seeking to address. So being very evidence based as to what exactly is the challenge and who's going to be uh, impacted by it and who's going to be the beneficiary of uh, any of the proposals that are successful. And how we're going to really solve that issue for the key people uh, that are being impacted at the moment. So that's a relatively short process of putting forward the, the concept application and a few details that would help us to establish whether it meets some of those challenge statements whether it's going to uh, meet some of the mission statements that we've outlined and that it's going to be something that we can take forward and prioritise for funding. At that point, um, we would assess all of the applications and those that we think would be potentially successful, we would invite to complete a detailed application round. That's where it would be a lot more in-depth, looking at kind of the budget, the um, programme plan, looking at what kind of support there's been from the relevant government department. So making sure that really we're designing something from the ground up that's going to be impactful in the countries that we're trying to target. So not necessarily something um, that is completely standalone from an organisation that's not been uh, in the market, but really how can we leverage partners that are on the ground, the ministries, um, and being able to see exactly how we can be as impactful as possible. So it's at that stage we'd be really looking in depth at uh, a lot of the uh, criteria around, is it viable? Is it feasible? Is it desirable? And really then being able to establish what are those uh, applications that we want to then prioritise to take to DFID for their recommendation. So this is something that is very, very closely designed with DFID. And as Amy said before, in that first round, it'll be very much prioritising those that are related to the COVID statement. So this is going to be the application process for the multiple different rounds. Um, but at this stage, for the first cycle, we'll be getting DFID involved throughout, uh, including that concept application round, to make sure that we're still in line with the guidance from the World Health Organization and from DFID to make sure that we're um, you know, not doing anything that goes against some of the challenges that we're facing with COVID at the moment. So if we just go on to the next slide, we'll be able to see exactly how the cycles work. So we'll talk you through cycle one. It's worth noting, as Amy said before, this learning and innovation fund is lasting right through from now, uh, the launch a few weeks ago, right through to um, early 2022. And so through that time, there's going to be five different cycles. So I'll talk you through an example of one, but rest assured there are future cycles if you're not quite ready to make an application at the moment. So a couple of weeks ago on the 27th of April, we launched our fund. And as Amy said, we'd adapted that to be able to bring in that COVID challenge to make sure that we're addressing these adapting needs of the, of the changing global landscape. We've been doing some marketing activities, some social media. And as you can see today, uh, we're now at this uh, ISNTD Connect session. So really trying to drive lots of people to know what our fund is about and to think about whether they or people that they know might want to apply. 
So the submission window is open. Um, we'll point you to our website shortly, but you can go on and download all of the documentation, which includes fund guidelines, concept application template itself, and a lot more about the Ascend program, how we're going to be measuring applications, um, and a frequently asked questions section. And also we've got an email address that you can uh, you can ask any questions. So we'll be closing that application window on the 29th of this month. And that's at the point where we'll be gathering all of those concept applications and considering what would be those that are um, meeting the eligibility criteria, which we'll come on to shortly, that are meeting those challenge statements, that are within the, the right kind of geographical landscape, et cetera. And any that are successful in early June will go through to a concept review with DFID and we'll hold that consultation and work out, is this the right time to be progressing with these applications? At that point, we'll be inviting people to start completing the detailed application. So we'd expect mid-June to be putting those invites out and getting them the details back in the July timeframe. So anybody that has been asked to complete those detailed applications will also be given additional support through that time if they need it to be able to complete that documentation. We would then be able to go through a detailed um, expert review panel. So part of that panel is to bring together lots of different people from the Ascend program itself across different partners, but also from uh, external to the Ascend program. So technical experts on those different areas that can really help us to establish, are these the applications that we want to prioritize? It's at that point we'll work out which ones we want to recommend to put forward to, to DFID, and DFID will be aware of all of the applications that have come in. So it's a fully transparent process between ourselves and DFID. And then we get to the point where they would um, be able to either accept or reject our recommendation and sign off the funding so that we can then start working with the applicant to actually mobilize and get some of these projects started. So we would expect that to be kind of the late August timeframe of getting the approvals and then moving into projects from kind of September onwards. So if we go on to the next slide, as I mentioned, we've got some eligibility criteria. And that's definitely a lot more comprehensive in the links that, that will be provided. So I would suggest that you go on and read those in the guidelines. But essentially, as Amy mentioned, we made the decision that we wanted this to be as an open a fund as possible so that we can get the most ideas and innovations coming in and really start to make the big impact with this learning and innovation fund uh, being able to address the emerging needs. But it is really important that, that we are clear on some of the eligibility criteria. So we do need the um, stakeholders in the global community, all stakeholders, sorry, in the global community can apply, but they must be part of a legally registered organization. Um, as I said, you can, you can find out more details in the fund guidelines. It's really important that this does relate to at least one of the five NTDs or the COVID-19 challenge. So this is, as much as it's global and, and wide open, it's still got some very targeted objectives. And it must relate to one of the 13 ascend countries that Amy has outlined or their border regions. So as we mentioned before, there are some um, cross collaboration. We understand that um, countries don't oper operate in a silo and they're often affected by their border regions. So that's something that we have opened this up to as well. As I say, very much important for you to go on to the uh, website and see some more of the detail if you are thinking of applying. So if we go on to the next slide, Here's the key slide for you. It's about what to do next. So we've got a comprehensive uh, document suite on our webpage, as you'll find there on ascendwest-innovationfund.org. We've also got an email address and you're very welcome to email any questions. If there's anything not clear uh, that you can't find uh, out of those guidelines, please do get in touch with us. We would rather have more emails of innovations uh, than less. And it's really important that you download the documentation on the website uh, of the concept application and apply before the 29th of May. We are going to have to be very strict with that deadline to be fair to everybody. And we would also really encourage you to share the word to anybody that you think that this would be relevant to. So we can provide to you a social media toolkit to allow you to put out tweets. We encourage you to follow the different consortiums. Um, that are working on this and to, to retweet, share and anybody that you know that, that would be interested please do spread the word. We're really trying to make a massive impact on the NTD community in these countries. And we know it's even more challenging with COVID-19. So the more we can share, the better. And the more applications we get in, um, the more likely we are to be able to, to make the impact that we so desire. So if we go on to the next slide, 
A bit of interaction now. If people have uh, access to their web browser or to a mobile phone, just to be able to gather some more information and, and to share that with the group, we would encourage you to go on to www.menti.com. That's M E N T I dot com. And you'll be able to enter a code there, which will lead you to these three questions. The code for you is 302924. I'll give you a couple of moments to, to log on to that, and we're going to be asking you a few key questions. And the first one being, we'd like to really understand out of today and from what you've already known of the fund, how likely you might be to apply to this fund. The second question we'll be asking you will be, what challenge statement are you interested in addressing? So really trying to gauge which of those five challenge statements are really resonating with people that are on this call today. And lastly, what obstacles do you have in applying? So it's really important to us. We've spoken about how this fund is to adapt to the emerging needs of the market. But we're also really keen to, to adapt our process. So if there's anything that you think would be blocking you from applying, it would be really interesting to hear from you to see whether that's something that we can help you to overcome. Obviously, we can't overcome everything, but really happy to see where we can. So if we move to the screen, showing if everyone's been able to log on to see what the response has been. So great. Thank you to those that have been able to log on. And it's good to see that there's that while the data is coming through, um, we've got a couple of people that are very likely um, to apply in cycle two or beyond, one in cycle one. Great. Can't wait to, to get your application. Um, and then there's quite a few that are unsure or likely. So I think for those people, it'd be great to just have a look on our website and check out whether you think based on the parameters we've discussed today and what's in there, whether that's something you'd want to do. And for those that are very unlikely, I'd still really encourage you to share uh, in case there's other people in your network that are. Great, it's looking like quite a bit of the of information's coming through, so that's great. And moving on to the second question, I'll give you a couple of moments to be able to answer that, but it's about what challenge statement are you interested in addressing? And in particular, it would just be very interesting for us to see for, for when we're working with DFID to be able to respond as to what has really resonated with people what do they think it's important to address? And where do they think this fund really plays a part? Excellent. Well, with this data coming in, um, seems seems like a pretty good spread uh, across some of the challenge statements. So, so that's really that's really good news. That's um, yeah, that's really positive. Excellent. So we've got currently yeah a few more for for COVID and the collaboration and multi sectoral action. Fantastic. And then a good number for health system strengthening and data systems. Excellent. Well, I think we can clearly see where our, our gap is there in the, in the challenge statement. Um, fantastic. Oh, that's a really, really positive spread. Excellent. And if you could just type in what potential obstacles you'd have to applying. I know there's probably only a very small amount of word count, but anything you can put in there um, would be just really helpful, helpful for us when we're designing the fund and adapting it as we move forward. I'll give you a couple of moments to do that. And whilst we're um, doing that, it would be great to hear from people if they've got any questions for me or Amy um, that, we can, that we can help you with. Thank you very much, Gemma. And a big thank you, Amy. Um, that this is a, I think you made it clear, this is a fantastic opportunity here. Uh, we would certainly encourage everybody to consider it very um, seriously. And most importantly, as uh, you mentioned, please bearing in mind the 29th of May deadline, that very strict cutoff, and uh, to widely share this opportunity. And if you can't apply straight away, to still bear it in mind for the next cycles and also to share it throughout your networks, um, your social media networks and so forth. So thank you very much. And uh, certainly there have been a few questions here on, on the chat for you. I think um, the, a lot of discussion here and the main questions from our attendees were kind of related to what you would consider to be included under the umbrella of this funding. Um, so, for example, uh, Blaine Doyle here from GlowDX. Hello, Blaine. Nice to see you. Um, is asking 
is um, this funding strictly for the treatment and delivery of healthcare, or could this be for the delivery of diagnostics? Would that be applicable here? Uh, for example, we are a diagnostic company um, with a drone delivery partner. So is that something that might fall under the funding? Great, thanks for that great question. Yes, absolutely. Um, that sounds like a really exciting and innovative area of work that we would definitely welcome through the fund. Um, but again, I would really encourage you to have a look through the fund guidelines um, because any funded initiative does, does need to kind of complement and add value to, to the broader Send West and Central Africa programme. Um, but yeah, it sounds like the, the area of diagnostics is definitely something that, that has potential there. Brilliant. And kind of uh, building on that, from Nigeria. And um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Uh, please, has Ascent considered integration with other case management NTDs such as Borrelli ulcer, leprosy, etc.? Uh, particularly as such diseases have been mapped and a draft operational plan has been developed. So would you consider any programs that are also bringing in other diseases outside of those listed? Yes, we would. So I think essentially we're looking for projects that do relate to at least one of the five NTDs um, that we spoke about earlier. So those five NTDs that are amenable to preventive chemotherapy. Um, but we would also welcome proposals that do include additional activities that tackle other NTDs that have been prioritised in the London Declaration, as long as there is a strong case that these can be integrated based on geographical overlap um, with the priority top five diseases um, and that as long as there is a clear justification of need that's based on the disease burden and uh, any other lack of other financial support. Wonderful. That's good news. That's great news. Um, and so moving slightly away from a kind of a disease focus, uh, both Bumkuth Mat as well as Dr. Obiagali Nebe, hello, doctor. Um, we're both asking, so uh, Dr. Nebe is asking, can the, must the application be tied to existing ASCEND supported projects or is it possible for in-country WASH partners who could apply? And uh, Bumkuth was asking, would ASCEND support vector control intervention? And so kind of all those um, parallel interventions, would they be considered? Great, thanks for those questions. Um, so in terms of the WASH question, yes, we would welcome applications from local WASH agencies um and i would in, yeah encourage you to have a look at the fund guidelines and there's an annex in there that lists out what are the um program activities that are being supported under ascend as part of the wider program um so have a look through those because anything would need to kind of not duplicate what's already being supported um but add value um, um and it doesn't necessarily mean that projects have to be completely tied with those activities that are being support, supported through the, the broader program. They don't have to be implemented together, but we would absolutely encourage coordination with what's already kind of going on in particular countries and reaching out to, to partners that are delivering Ascend in your particular focus country. And then, sorry, the second question was on vector Excellent. control, wasn't it? Um, so actually, um, yeah. In the original DFID kind of terms of reference for Ascend, um, it was a stipulation that Ascend will not directly provide any vet control interventions through the program. Um, so we, we can't include, yeah, direct vector control, um, unfortunately. Noted, thank you. Um, and as Gemma, you reiterated as well at the end of your presentation, uh, it's very important to really consult the documents in detail and just, you know, if you want more information about the, the scope and the exact agreement, uh, that is all on the website at ascendwestinnovationfund.org. Let me always uh, refer to that. 
that website. Um, just moving on a little bit uh, from the scope of the funding, there were quite a few questions. Uh, COVID pandemic, and so uh, some of the attendees were wondering whether the pandemic itself was going to affect in any way the process of the funding. And also, uh, we had a couple questions summarized uh, very nicely by Garija Sankar's question. Hello, Garija, as well. Welcome. Nice to see you. Um, will round one focus almost entirely on COVID response, uh, or will you consider as well um, non-COVID applications? And if so, should we even consider applying in round one if we do not have a COVID-specific innovation for response? Yeah, so on, on cycle one, I think um, there's, it's definitely worth applying if it's non-COVID related. I think the point being that if it's going to be an application that wouldn't be able to progress because of the restrictions we've got on COVID and kind of movement at the time, then obviously it's probably not the right time to be putting in that application. Um, so it's not that it's only going to be for um, things that are uh, targeting COVID, but certainly things that aren't derailed by the fact that there, there are restrictions whilst COVID are taking place. So we would still welcome applications that are non-COVID related, um, but it's certainly something that we will, we will bear in mind and make sure that we're exploring how much can continue um, during this time of uncertainty. A uh, question here from Joliet Chami. Hi, Joliet. Um, do you have a set budget for each round or a targeted number of proposals to fund? And are UK research staff and endemic country research staff costs eligible? So yeah, we don't we don't have um, a finite number of um, proposals that we're looking to award each round. Um, but I would say that the overall pot of funding that we have is just over four million pounds, which we do need to expend expend between now and March twenty twenty two. And then in terms of those costs. Yeah, I would encourage you. There's um, some guidelines where we provide a lot more details on kind of which costs are eligible and, and which are not, and they're available on the website. So, so please have a look through there, and um, which should answer your question. Brilliant. Um, well, we're coming towards the end of our forty minutes now for today's session. I was wondering, Amy and Gemma, if we have a couple more minutes to take a final few questions, uh, just one or two last questions here. Uh, obviously, there's been a huge amount of interest and I'm sure many of you will still have many more questions. So please do not hesitate if we do run out of time and we haven't come around to your question to email the fund team. The email address is on screen at the moment. Uh, but there was an interesting question here uh, on a bit of a broader topic from Ashley Souza, who was uh, asking, on a recent ISNTD webinar, uh, Mwale Malicella, who is head of the Department for Control of NTD at WHO, mentioned that WHO2 is looking at how NTD platforms can be repurposed to support COVID response. Do you see your work contributing or interacting with WHO's efforts in this area? Yes, absolutely. Um, we see them as, as being extremely complementary. Um, and the the kind of challenge statement on COVID-19 has really um, been aligned to that WHO um, guidance. Um, so when you have a look through the, the fund guidelines, you will you will see that for for projects that are focusing on supporting with the, the COVID-19 response, we would really look for initiatives to align with the WHO pillars that are outlined in their operational planning guidelines. And um, so these include areas such as uh, surveillance, rapid response teams and case investigation, as well as kind of country level coordination, planning and monitoring. Um, so yeah, we're very much, much aligned with kind of WHO's response um, here. Fantastic. And um, if anybody would like to um, hear a bit more from that presentation, Mwali Malicella was speaking uh, at ICENTD Connect and all our past webinars are available on our YouTube. So perhaps just to conclude, um, you know, we, I, I'll 
take a few minutes just to ask you, you know, ideally what you know, next steps and what would be your ideal scenario? What are you really looking for? I've mentioned before, making sure that all our attendees um, share the news of the and as well as all the information, even if they're not able to apply right now. So um, any final concluding words that you'd like to share with our attendees? Great, thanks, Marianne. Well, I just here yeah, want to say a huge thank you for everyone that's joined. Um, and we really appreciate all of your engagement and the questions you've asked. Um, so I would just really encourage you to have a look at the fund website, read through the documentation, um, and we are here to answer your questions. So if you're unsure about anything, if you're unsure if you have an idea that fits with the fund challenges, then please feel free to drop us an email and we will come back to you. Uh, no, just to echo, uh, Amy, we appreciate you all joining the call. Please share the word and we'd rather receive more emails uh, with questions if you're considering applying. Um, so if you, if you really think there's anything you need to know more of, please do email us, we, we will definitely get back to you. So thank you very much all of you for, for joining today and thank you, Marianne. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, to the three of you, Amy, Gemma and Dave, uh, who was w working very silently behind the scene there to make it all run very smoothly. Um, so a massive thank you to the three of you. We'll definitely be watching this space and looking at all the um, funding and all the projects that def get selected. Uh, thank you as well to our audience today. And I'd like to say a final very big thank you to today's speakers. Uh, don't forget, May 29th is the deadline and uh, let's keep in touch until then. Thank you and all the best. Keep safe everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.